I'm Vicki Hogarth and this is a Newsbreak 26 special report. Fourth doses of COVID-19 vaccine are available across the province as hospitalization numbers appear to be stabilizing. Joining me to discuss the current state of the pandemic in New Brunswick is Deputy Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Eve Legere. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Legere. My pleasure. So ICU numbers are down in New Brunswick. Hospitalization numbers appear to have stabilized. Case counts are even down. What does this say about where we're at in terms of our recovery from this wave? And should we expect um, a downward trend in terms of numbers? So uh, when we lifted the uh, mandatory order on March 14th, we had predicted increase in the number of cases and hospitalizations uh, with a peak around mid-April. So what we're seeing today continues to be in line with what we were expecting to see. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, our number of active hospitalization and deaths has remained stable. Our number of ICU admissions has gone down. Uh, we're seeing uh, a decrease in the number of PCR and point of care tests. Uh, so these, uh, these indicators, these numbers are, are suggesting to us that we're stabilizing, that we've reached our peak, and hopefully in the coming weeks we will see decreases. Some New Brunswickers have noticed discrepancies between the numbers that Vitalite and Horizon are releasing um, versus public health. Can you explain um, why those numbers are different? Well, the numbers that we report uh, are number of hospitalizations, deaths and ICU admissions for COVID. Uh, the numbers that the regional health authorities uh, are reporting, I believe, are related on the number of admissions and ICUs uh, admissions for and with COVID. So uh, these are different numbers that are meant to represent different things as well. So what we're trying to um, represent here is the number of individuals that are admitted uh, for COVID. So COVID was the reason for their admission. This is really meant to be a better representation of the risk to New Brunswickers. We're really re trying to report as, as much as possible on the disease itself. Mm -hmm. The regional health authorities uh, are publishing numbers of individuals who are admitted in their facilities for and with COVID, which means that any individual that has COVID within their facilities is being reported. And that's that's a bit of a different um, different number than what we're reporting and is meant to really represent uh, what they're living on the ground, which means the number of, of uh, patients uh, that they have to deal with, they have to manage within their facilities. So it's meant to really represent the burden that's, uh, that they're uh, facing at this point in time. We have heard some cases of New Brunswickers having COVID twice um, in, in 2022 at that. Would that be the case of someone, for instance, having Delta and then Omicron, or is there a possibility of having two different Omicron subvariants twice um, within just a matter of months? Well, we certainly know that uh, infection from a previous variant does provide some protection against future variants, uh, but certainly that is a possibility. So individuals who have been infected with Delta uh, do uh, remain susceptible or, or can be reinfected by Omicron and even within variants uh, within the Omicron family as well. So certainly one can assume that because we've been infected uh, before that we are uh, fully protected against uh, future reinfection. So definitely don't let your guard down. Uh, on the topic right. of fourth doses, second booster doses being available today as we record this, how much more protected would a person be having a fourth dose versus let's say just three? Well, so as you know, um, our national advisory community immunization has put out recommendations on that fourth dose. And New Brunswick as well has uh, made public uh, our eligibility for that fourth dose, which actually begins today. Uh, so certainly for those who are eligible, we certainly encourage them to consider that dose. Uh, those recommendations have been made looking at uh, data from mostly Israel, which was the first country who went out uh, with that uh, fourth uh, booster dose, or that fourth dose, I should say. Uh, and the studies that have been done from their experience there suggest that it does provide uh, significant reduction in infection 
uh, as well as uh, more severe outcomes such as, as hospitalization and deaths. Paxlovid, an antiviral uh, medication that had became more accessible to New Brunswickers last week. Can you explain a little bit about who is eligible for that and, and when it should be used? So Paxlovid is a treatment uh, for someone who has been infected with COVID. Uh, it is meant to reduce their risk of hospitalization and more serious outcomes. Uh, so it's not meant to be a replacement, for example, for vaccines. It's really for someone who has been infected. Uh, it needs to be administered fairly rapidly, so within five days of onset. So for anyone who uh, has tested positive, uh, it's important to um, take immediate steps if you feel that you're eligible um, to, uh, to gain access to that medication. Those who are eligible are those who are over 18 and who are immunocompromised, so have conditions that reduce their immune system's ability to fight off the infection. Uh, anyone who is over 80 who is either vaccinated or unvaccinated, uh, as well as those who are over 50 uh, who are not vaccinated and are either First Nations or living in a long-term care facility or receiving home care. So those are the ones in New Brunswick who are eligible for Paxlovid at this time. And finally, of all the mandates uh, we've experienced through the course of the pandemic, masking seems to be the one that is the most polarizing. Is there any instance um, where public health would recommend masking coming back, let's say in school settings or, or just in general? I think at this point in time, really, um, you know, we, we continue to urge all New Brunswickers to continue to adhere to the public health measures that have really gotten us through the last two years uh, of this pandemic. Uh, masking is really one of many tools in our toolbox uh, that can protect us from COVID. Uh, and so even if uh, there are no mandates in place, uh, again, the, the message that we continue to give to New Brunswickers is, is after two years, we all know what we need to do and can do to protect ourselves from COVID. So we continue to encourage New Brunswickers to do that because certainly COVID is, is still in our communities uh, and is not going away anytime soon. So we need to continue to, to follow the advice that we know that works and works well to keep us safe. Well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. That was Deputy Chief Medical Officer of Health for New Brunswick, Dr. Eve Legere. I'm Vicki Hogarth, and this has been a Newsbreak 26 Special Report. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.